Hey everybody, welcome back to the Northwoods Family Channel. Last month we did a 2,000 mile review on our Polaris General 4 1000 Lux and we wanted to follow that up with a few videos talking about some of the accessories we've added and how those have been working now that we've had a few thousand miles on them as well. So today we're going to be talking about our cargo rack from Razorback Off-Road. This is definitely one of the accessories that gets the most attention and people ask about right away because it really does stand out on our machine. Razorback Off-Road is a company in Idaho specializing in UTV and off-road accessories. Their products are made in the USA and everything we've seen from them uh, have been really well made and really good quality. So this is the Generation 2 Expedition Cargo Rack. It's a product that has been out for a few years and one that we have really come to like. They have some different cargo rack models and they are available for several different machines besides the Polaris General. We picked up the Expedition Rack because it came with this rear gate and though we actually thought we were going to remove it for most of our riding, we ended up just leaving it on. Installation of the rack was relatively simple. It took my wife and I just a couple hours to install. The rack itself is made from one and a half inch diameter steel tubing. It's nicely welded and powder coated. Razorback Off-Road advises the total gear capacity for the rack is 160 pounds. 40 pounds on the rear cargo gate, 60 pounds on the top rack, and 30 pounds on each of the sides. Now, full disclosure, we exceeded the top rack load rating on our Black Hills trip. I remember reading about it, but it must have slipped my mind while we were packing. I'm pretty sure we carried over 100 pounds up there for some 650 miles over rugged terrain, but the rack held up just fine. I wouldn't recommend it, but it worked for us. On each of the sides, we carry a three gallon fuel can, which can extend the range of our machine by 60%. The Rotopax mounting system is awesome. Unlike some of the other Rotopax style mounts I've seen that are a twist and lock design, the Razorback off-road mount simply screws in and out. So when your fuel can heats up or it cools and contracts, you can still take them on and off or tighten them up so they don't rattle. It's infinitely adjustable. The cans themselves are from Rotopax and they are really heavy duty plastic. The nozzles are excellent. We all know how terrible gas nozzles are these days, but these work really well. For what it is worth, you can mount pretty much any of the Razorback mounts inside or outside of your cargo rack. You can even mount them back to back so you have one inside and one outside. Just keep in mind the recommended maximum loads. On the rear gate, we carry our spare 27 inch tire. We can open the gate with the tire attached. The gate is quite robust. It's not going to bend or break. Razorback does not recommend using the dump bed when the spare tire is attached. I have found that you can do it in a pinch, but I really wouldn't recommend it. The rack has lots of tie down points, which we've used while overlanding. You can tie bungees or ratchet straps to, and you can lock it closed with a padlock to at least provide some degree of security for the larger items you may want to leave in the back. There are two minor issues we've had the rack, which I'll discuss now. The first is the latch pin. I actually really like the design of the pin. It's spring loaded and easy to use. When it was new, by closing the latch and then screwing the pin in, it would lock. After a while of it being used, either the locking mechanism wore out or, I don't know, maybe one of us pulled on it when it was locked or something. Either way, we found out that the gate could pop open when traveling over rugged terrain. When we were on our Black Hills trip, we actually dumped some sleeping bags on the trail on our first day, though we were able to backtrack a couple miles and found them safe and sound. So just to be safe, I would recommend if you are carrying gear in the back, either to run a padlock through the latch or even just a simple hitch pin or something so there is a physical block to keep the gate from opening. The other thing we noticed is over time, the sides of the bed of our general may have spread a little bit. I haven't determined 100% what the cause of this is, but my guess is because the rack is metal and there's some weight on top of the bed now and the bed is plastic, the bed sides are just spreading a little bit. The only issue this has caused is the factory tailgate on our machine won't always latch. If you take a look at it, you can see the gap is not quite even. So what I did to fix the problem more permanently is I removed the latch points on either side of the bed, just added a couple of washers as spacers to close up that gap, and now the tailgate latches just fine. So that was a downside, I guess, to the Expedition Rack, but I can't really blame Razorback for that. I think it's just one of those things you have to deal with due to the design of the factory tailgate. 
And honestly, it's not something that would keep me from buying the rack again if I had to do it all over again. So that's the rundown of our Razorback off-road expedition rack after a couple thousand miles of some pretty heavy duty riding this summer. Overall, it's been a great piece of equipment. It's really well made, it's tough as nails, and it's allowed us to carry a ton more gear than we would have been able to before. Without it, I don't think we would have been able to do the overlanding trip that we did in the Black Hills for an entire week with all of our family. We just wouldn't have had the room to bring all the clothing, camping gear, fuel, and other items we needed to make that a success. Anyways, thanks for watching. We hope you found this video helpful if you've been looking for ways to haul more cargo on your side-by-side, -side, or if you're looking at getting into overland camping yourself out of your UTV. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you, so be sure to drop those in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed the video, give us a big thumbs up. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.